everyone, and welcome to this, another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode, we took a look at this character's treadmill run. Uh, the character can now walk, he can run. In today's episode, I'd like to take a look at the jump. Alright, let's get started. Okay, guys, so the jump itself, I'm going to break this up into two episodes, I think. One for the actual creation of all of the assets and etc that needs to be done here there's a fair amount of stuff that needs to be set up for this jump to work and then we'll take a look at the code in the next episode otherwise i think we're gonna end up with something that's far far too long uh i made a couple of adjustments now first of all before i go into that let's let's uh let me tell you how our jump's going to work uh, our jump is a gravity based jump and gravity based jumps i really like them uh it takes the it takes the control out of the animator's hands actually uh, the animator is in charge of building what I call a treadmill jump uh, meaning that everything occurs at the origin there's no there's no height information passed along through the animation the height information it comes strictly from code all right we're gonna actually use gravity based uh, gravity based animation so we're gonna apply a force to a rigid body to have our character jump in the air that's how we're planning on on doing this and it works really well for a lot of uh, things that I've done so far particularly when we're talking about uh, you know like a side scroller or something like that where the height might change uh, and you don't have to build your level then based on how high the animation was done you don't have to create your animation and then adjust your level accordingly or go back and build your level and then adjust your animation accordingly all you have to do is change one value that one value is the amount of power that you give to your rigid body in a force and that'll create your cause your character to go either higher or lower. Now, if you remember correctly, if we take a look at our actual model here, uh, if we take a look at our animations, we had several um, animations that I'd added previously. We had a, a player jump and a player fall. Some of you are probably asking, like, well, do you have an anticipatory move before your jump? Uh, I do have it in here. If you want to use it, that's fine. Um, I am not going to include it in this tutorial, the anticipatory move, strictly because I want I want it to the jump to occur immediately upon the player pressing the button. So if the player presses my jump button, I want my, my on-screen character to react immediately. I don't want to go through an, anticipa an anticipation and then jump. Instead, we're just going to go immediately into our jump and, and then into our fall when we're past a certain level. Now, I did have to add something, and I don't know if this is going to work. This might look awful. <laughs> so the character that we're using for this tutorial is the character that I used to create the game uh, Nether Runner. And in Nether Runner, I didn't actually have a player landing animation. Uh, for this type of thing, you should definitely have a player land. Uh, it it kind of cleans it kind of cleans everything up. Make sure that everything looks clean when we're doing it. And I don't have it, so I'm using one. I'm making it up. The player land animation, I simply added plus, and I added an animation that goes between uh, between frame 46 and 49. It's it's it doesn't look good. Let's let's slow this down. It like 30% as fast. Uh, it's it's not really a land animation, but we're going to use it as one just so you guys can see uh, what it sh what it we you know how the how the state machine should be set up. If you're building your own character, uh, create your own land animation properly in in your 3D package as opposed to just trying to stuff something in here. But in this case here, uh, you'll at least be able to see what it looks like, and maybe it'll be fine. I mean, I haven't planned for it, so I doubt it. But who knows, right? Who knows? All right, so with that in mind, with that's how we're doing everything, uh, basically what we want to do is we want to create a situation where our player, if they are standing on the ground, they are not jumping and they are not falling, but if they are not standing on the ground, they are either jumping or falling. So the first thing I want to do, let's go into our scene, uh, let's go to our cube, our ground cube, and what I want to do is I want, this is our only our only platform that we have in the game. What I want to do is change the name of this platform, the, the layer this platform is on, from default to a ground layer. All right, so I'm going to say add layer. I'm going to go down to my user layer eight, and I'm going to say I'm going to call this um, ground. All right, it's going to be user layer ground. Let's go back to our cube. Back to our cube now, and I'm going to change this to ground. So. If our player is standing on this cube, which is considered to be the ground, then our player is not jumping or falling. Otherwise, they are jumping or falling. That's the idea behind this. What we're ultimately going to do is we're going to create a little tiny collider underneath our player's feet. And 
whenever that pl that collider is in contact with this ground layer, this uh, any any collider that has this ground layer as its layer, uh, then we're considered standing on ground. Okay, you'll understand that better as we actually move forward. That's the first thing I want to do. The next thing I want to do, let's go to our animation, to our animator, excuse me, and I want to add a number of things to our animator. The first thing I'm going to do, go back to my mo my model, I'm going to find my player land right here. I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drop it onto the screen somewhere. Let's let's put it right here. It doesn't really matter where I put it right now. That player land is going to be the state that we travel from. When we're falling, we land and then we go back to some other state. Okay? So we're going to use our player land. The other thing I want to create is a brand new state, a brand new state uh, blend tree, actually, by right-clicking anywhere in the gray, right-clicking, say create state, go to from new blend tree and click that. We're going to get a box that looks very similar to any other state that we've got in our game so far. And I'm going to change his name to, uh, let's change the name to Jump, Jump Blend Tree. All right, Jump Blend Tree. Okay, so let's set this up first of all um, before we move on. Now, basically what I want to happen is if our, if our player is not on the ground then they're going to be in this jump tree state and I want them to be able to go to this jump tree from anywhere else from anywhere else from any of these other states so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right I'm gonna right click on my any state I'm gonna say make transition I'm gonna drop it off on my blend tree so from any state our our character can go into the jump now after when we hit the ground again I'm gonna right click make transition and drop it off on our player land so when our character is not on the ground they are here when they're grounded again they go here and lastly from our player land I'm gonna right click make transition I'm gonna drop it off in this idle substate uh, to the player idle left which is our default state uh, so basically what's gonna happen is our player is gonna leave the ground go into some form of either jump or fall when they hit the ground again they're going to our player land when they go into our player land after a certain amount of time they're gonna go back to our idle state and then our animation kicks in again. All right, perfect. So we need a couple of parameters to ensure that we are able to control this properly. I'm gonna come over here with my parameters uh, tab selected. I'm gonna say plus, and I'm gonna add a brand new float. And this float I'm gonna call uh, vertical speed. And the vertical speed float is gonna be what controls our actual blend in here. All right, we'll take a look at that in a second. I'm also going to add another parameter plus it's going to be a bool and I'm going to call it is grounded. So is grounded will be the state of whether or not our player's feet are on the ground. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. So first of all what I want to do is I want to set it up so that if in this transition if let's scroll down here if we are not grounded so I'm going to go is grounded equals false if we are not grounded from any state we are then going to enter this blend tree okay and we'll set that blend tree up in one moment if we are grounded again then what I want to happen is grounded if is grounded is true then what I want to happen is I want our character to go through our landing animation I want to make sure has exit time is turned off so if we are not grounded in here, if we are grounded back into here, and with this last transition, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna leave it for a, a particular amount of time. Um, has exit time is gonna be turned on, uh, and we're gonna leave this. Now this animation that I set up, this player land, uh, is only three frames long. It's much too quick. Uh, so I'm gonna set it up so that the speed is much slower. I'm gonna set it up so that the speed is only operating at let's say like 0.3. Okay, point three. If I go back here now and I take a look, we can see that we've got a little bit longer here. We've got a little bit better blend. So I'm going to use it like this. I, I don't know if it's going to look good. I don't know if it's going to look good or not. Uh, like I said, I just made this up. It's, it's just a Band-Aid. Anyway, that is our, that's going to be fine for our current uh, state machine here. Now, let's take a look at the actual jump blend tree. If I double click on the jump blend tree, double click, you can see that I have moved into that blend tree and the actual screen looks slightly different. Uh, what we want to do is up here we can see this is called uh, the blend tree and it's a 1D blend, which means it's using one parameter to determine what state we are blending into. Uh, right now it says the parameter is our walk float and it's not. We want to make sure we're using our vertical speed. You can see we have two options here. We have walk float and we have vertical speed. 
both of these parameters correspond to a float value in here. Okay, so uh, you won't ever see any of the bools or anything else whenever you're building a tree like this. You'll only see these values because it'll give us a range of values in which we can be in. I'm going to use my vertical speed. Now, ultimately, our vertical speed is going to be related to how quickly up or down our rigid body is moving. We will take a look at that when we take a look at the coding episode. Now, what I want to do is I want to add a number of different motions that we can actually blend between. I'm going to hit the plus sign right here, and it's going to say add new motion field. Boom, I'm going to add it. Okay. Now, we have a couple of different ways we can fill this area in. I want to add both our fall and our jump into this into this uh, motion field here, uh, into two separate motion fields. So let's go over to our model again and our character, and let's find our jump. And I'm just going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it right here. That's one way of doing it. You can see that we've got a change that's occurred over here. We now have a transition that goes from our blend tree to our player jump. I'm then going to add one more plus motion field and this time instead of dragging and dropping you can see we've got a change that's occurred here instead of dragging and dropping I'm going to right click this little nipple thing I'm going to find our player fall and I'm going to add that as well so you can see now I have two different motions now what that does these two different motions I can now blend between them based on the value of vertical speed I'm going to supply this state machine with the vertical speed and we're going to get some blending that occurs between these two states and you can see it occurring both here with one being grayed out oops I clicked on the wrong thing there one being grayed out one becoming brighter uh, and the values go between 0 and 1 now right now they're between 0 and 1 simply because I have automated thresholds turned on that might work fine automated thresholds might work perfectly fine uh, and to be honest I don't know what my thresholds should be <laughs> I can't remember. I haven't gone through this first. This is the first time I'm going through it. So I don't really know what our thresholds would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a value, a random value. My player jump, when I add a rigid, when I add a force to my rigid body, my player is going to be forced up in the air, and it's going to have a positive Y value. So I'm going to say my threshold is 5. If, if my Y value of my, of my velocity of my, of my rigid body is greater than 5, uh, we're going to be completely in our player jump. If our our sorry, I just, it, it automatically switches like that, so you got to be careful. If our player is falling, that means we have a negative y velocity. Now I'm going to say negative five. That's strictly a guess. All right, we might have to come back and adjust these values. We probably will have to, but you can still see it does exactly the same thing where I'm blending between those two states, just like that. We can see it; it works fine. Now, this other one over here, this other column, is the, is the speed at which the animation plays. And you can adjust this. If you want to make your fall slower or faster, we might have to come in and adjust this. I'm not sure. Hover over it, change the animation speed. That's what this second column does. We're not going to touch it for now. Okay? That is our blend state. That's it. Let's go back by to our base layer. Now, basically, what's going to happen... Oh, one more thing I want to change. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is if we are if we are not grounded, we're going to come into here. We are going to be into our blend tree. We're either going to be in the fall state or the jump state, depending on how fast we're going. Once our character touches the ground again, we're going to move into our player land state, and from our player land state, automatically into our idle state. Okay. There is one more thing I want to change. If you click on your transition right here. Uh, and you click on your settings. I want to make sure of something. If I if I expand this a little bit, you can see can transition to self. If we are not careful and we leave this clicked, we can actually transition into this blend tree from the blend tree. And I don't want that. Once I'm in here, I want to stay in here. So I'm going to turn that off. All right. So can transition to self is turned off. Okay. I think that is all we need to do. We might want to go through and adjust these later on, and we will want to, oh no, a couple more things we want to do. We will adjust this later on uh, to make sure that our jump looks the way we want to look. The last thing I want to do in setting up our jump, I want to go over to our custom player, let's go back to our scene, and basically how this is going to work is we're going to draw a little tiny circle underneath our character's feet. If that circle collides with something that has the mask, or the, sorry, the layer of ground, then our, our character is grounded. If it doesn't, if there's no nothing grounding underneath this character, our player is either falling or jumping. What I want to do is I want to add a location that I can actually draw the little circle. Okay. What I'm going to do 
in my hierarchy, I'm going to say create. I'm going to create an empty game object, and I will call this, um, uh, I don't know, ground check. I'll call it ground check. It doesn't matter what you call it. I will call it ground check. Ground check, I'm going to zero it out. First of all, I'm going to reset it so it's at zero, zero, zero. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that this ground check is now included within my player hierarchy. I'm going to drag it, drop it on my custom player so it appears within my hierarchy. Okay. Once it's there, I can use this for my actual code. And we'll take a look at that code in the following episode. All right, guys? I'll make sure both episodes are out in the same week uh, so you guys can get to work on this. I don't want to go too long. I think we're already 15 or 20 minutes, and I don't want to go too long. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. In the next episode, we'll take a look at the code and get our player actually jumping. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. Let me know what you didn't like, though, and I'll make sure I make adjustments to my tutorials in the future. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.